Hey nerds, welcome to another MIT App Inventor 2 tutorial, and today we're going to make a Pong pinball app. Yeah, that sounds funky, but I got this idea from a subscriber, YouTuber, viewer that commented, could you create a Pong game like this, but at the bottom there is a drain. If the balls touch the drain, the game ends, and where there are paddles over the drain, which the user can press to cover the drain. Also, three targets that when the ball hits them, the user gets points. It could have like a scoreboard with high scores, and it saves all the high scores from highest to lowest. Now, I have accomplished all of that. I'm going to show you how to make all of that, but I cannot figure out the order thing. I'm going to leave that guy up to you, ordering the scoreboard from highest to lowest. I'm going to leave that one up to you guys. You can show me in the comments. You can private message me on Twitter, private message me on the back end of YouTube. That feature isn't used that much. But yeah, I want to hear what you guys find for it. Because my solution was not simple, it was very in-depth and took almost 20 minutes to record. I'm just going to leave it out, leave it up to you guys. So here we go. So we're going to start our new project, Pong Ball. Oh, uh, what did I do? I put a bracket in it. That's okay. So here we go. First off, we are going to put in a horizontal arrangement. Not a scroll arrangement, just an arrangement. We're going to leave it the way it is, except we're going to change the width to fill parent and the height unchanged. So the first thing we are going to put in our horizontal arrangement is a label. We're going to just leave the label name the fine, but we're going to change the text to score colon. All right, after that, we're going to add another label. We're going to set this label, we're going to rename it to score. So this is going to be the actual number that we change in display. And we're going to set the text for this to, by default, be zero. Now we're going to add a button. And finally, we're going to add a list viewer, list picker. I'm sorry. Apologies. So our text for our button will be start. And our list picker text will be, if I can find the text, scoreboard. Sounds proper, right? Score, space, board. Okay. And next, we are going to add a canvas, which is under drawing and animation. We are going to make this canvas fill parent for both height and width. Good, and good. All right, now we are going to add one ball. This is our ball. We're, I'm going to change the radius to 10, just out of default. That's what I like to have. Now next, we are going to add five image sprites. I'm just doing five by default. The first image sprite, sprite is going to be our bar. So picture for this, I'm just going to use an old banner photo from a long time ago. Scratch that, I'm going to use a coral reef. So we're going to upload this, going to input. So now, if you can see, the image got a little stretched out, wonky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the width to 100 pixels. And the height, or the width to 100, correct. And the height to 10. Okay. So we have our bar. Yes, it looks like the picture is very small, but it isn't. In fact, it is. it will stretch to the size of the bar. So I'm just going to drag this somewhere to the center, a little bit off the bottom. And now below this, I'm going to put my second image sprite. This one I'm going to put all the way to the left, and I'm going to use the same picture that I used for the original image. But width, I'm going to have set to 320. And height, I'm going to have set to 5 pixels. This will be our drain, as it was put at the bottom. So next, we are going to add our three score emblems. The way I'm going to do this, I'm going to name each one for their point value. So the first one is going to be 100. Oh, wait, no. That is our highest one, so it should be 300. I apologize. But it's up to you guys. I'm just doing this based on how I want the difficulty to be. My second lowest one, I'm going to name 200. And my third one, I am going to name 100. And to make the difficulty worth, like, the name of the points, I'm going to set the width of the 100-point um, sprite to 30 and the height to 15. I'm going to set the width of the 200-point block to 20 
and the height to 15 as well. And then for my 100 point block, I am going to set the width to 10 and the height to 10. This will give each individual block its own size. And for the picture, I'm just going to use the coral again. It'll just look like a blue blob because it is so tiny. And that is it for the design. We're going to hop right into the code blocks. All right, the first thing we are going to do is make our point procedure. So we're going to go to procedures, pull out to do, and we're going to make points. So for this, we're going to use an if, then, else, if, else, if statement. So you go into your control box, get an if, then statement. And then out of there, you're going to pull else, if, and else, if. So our first one will be if. 200 collided with other, that other is going to be ball 1. Then we are going to set score.txt to, let me get a math operator out, score.txt plus 100. 200, because it's the 200 block. Sorry about that. 200. And we are going to set the ball heading to 360, the degree of a circle, minus the current ball heading. What this will do is turn the ball 180 degrees to go in the opposite direction. Now, you can copy this and just paste it into the other if-then statement. Just be sure to switch the blocks as... All right, and then remember to change your scoring value per block making 100, 100, 200, 200, and 300, 300. The next block we are going to make is our start block. So, when button one, which is we know is our start button, I did not choose to rename it because we already knew what it was, we are going to set ball one to enabled, true. So this will begin the ball's like movement cycle, true. And then we are going to set ball interval to 10 and interval is in milliseconds at which the sprite position is updated see there right there on the top left how it didn't want the math block to pop up sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't now we are going to set the ball heading I'm just going to copy our ball heading block from there but delete the subtraction we're going to set it to a random integer between 225 and 315 this will be this will make the ball head down in any direction from the left to the right screen, but it won't go directly right or directly left. It'll always be going in a downward angle. So next we are going to set the ball speed to 7, in my case, just it's a ball speed that I found that I enjoy. It works well with the app. Next we are going to set the score text to 0. So this, what this is, if you've already played a game and you want to start your next game, you just automatically set the score back to zero and doesn't continue adding to your previous score. And finally, we're going to call ball.move to the dead center of the canvas at the top-ish. So the way I did this, just to reset it almost like dead center, middle, right off the top, is call ball.move to, not point, call ball.move to x and y, and our x well, our x is going to be with division. We are going to take the canvas width and divide it by 2. And then our y will be set to the ball's radius. The radius being 5, so it's going to set it basically just off the top. So now we have our start, start and our click. We're going to do some simple blocks right here to get everything set up. So, right now, we're going to work on our Pong Bouncer. This is going to set the image, so drag. When you drag the slider at the bottom, it will call it to move to get current X and start Y. So what this will do is let you move it along the X axis, which is horizontal, and not the Y axis. You will stay at your, at your Y that it was set at next block we are going to make is when ball one edge reached this just makes the ball bounce off the sides simple little block they've added they should just make it a default statement to be included with balls but that's okay all it is is call ball that bounce edge get edge so it tells it what edge to bounce off and it bounces off that edge and now we're going to do when ball one 
dot collided with procedure call point. So whenever the ball collides with one of the um, image sprites, it will add points to the score. Simple enough, right? And then we're going to make it another block for image sprite 1. When image sprite 1 collided with, remember, this is your bar that you drag across because it's a Pong game, you're going to use your set ball heading 360 block, which will just turn the ball around, make it go in a different direction. And what you can do here if you want is make it a random integer so it doesn't like turn fully around. Make sure it's around 180. You can do 175 to 160. This will make the ball go in a random direction, not based on which way you hit it. And some more blocks. This is going to be making our high score list view. If you want, you can stop the game, stop here. This is all you need if you don't want the high score. And I thank you so much for watching. You made it 13 minutes through the video. You're a blessing. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this helps you. Make sure you leave a comment below if you have any ideas. The AI, AI, AI is below. Thank you so much for watching. You're a blessing. But let's jump right into it and make our high score. All right. So our final block before we add the high score thing is when image sprite 2 collide with call ball dot move to xy and what you can do here is just copy your call ball move from the start statement put that there and then you're going to set the ball speed to 0 so set ball dot speed to 0 all right so after we set the ball speed to 0 we're also going to set the score dot text to 0 this resets your score because game over you hit the drain and that is all for this part of the app. If you would like to continue working and get the high score page, stick around. But if you this is it for you, thank you so much for watching. I'm glad you could stick around. So the first thing we're going to do is go back to our designer, go to our storage, and put in a tiny DB. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is call an initialized global variable name. We're going to name it scores and set it to create an empty list. Now, once we do that, we are going to go back to our image sprite 2 dot collided with and we are going to call dot add items to list and then get global scores so you can just hover over your variable and call down get global scores this will be the name of your list and then item it is going to add is the score dot text this will take whatever your score is and put it into the list next we're going to call our tiny db which we added and the tag we are going to score store is the score so this will just display the score when you open the list. And value to store is the list as, it, as a whole. And then finally, we are going to set list picker dot elements to call tiny db dot get tag. So this will just set the list to whatever the tiny database stores. And then finally, you're going to add when screen one initializes, set list picker dot elements to call tiny db dot get tags. And that is all you need for this app. What it'll do is run. The app will move. The ball will move around. Ball will move anywhere on the screen based on where it goes on the starting heading. And then when it collides with one of the images, it will add points to the score. And then when you hit the drain, it's done. Game over. It should add the scores to the list if you implement the scoreboard. If not, it'll just restart your game and you press start again to get going. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad that this helped you. If it did, I really would love some input from you guys. If you guys can think of any way to increase this game's functionality or make it better. If you guys added anything to yourselves, I would love to hear about it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please leave a like, comment, just do your thing, and thank you.